ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to varun beverages limited earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Varun Beverages Q3 and 9M CY 2023 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Ravi Jayapuria, Chairman of the company. Mr. Varun Jayapuria, Executive Vice Chairman and Whole Time Director, and Mr. Raj Gandhi, Group CFO and Whole Time Director of the company. We will initiate the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Ravi Jaipuria to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our earning conference call. I hope all of you had the opportunity to go through our results presentation that provides details of our operational and financial performance for the quarter and nine months ended 30th September 2023. We are pleased to report a robust quarter, achieving a top line growth of 22%. and a pat growth of 30% year on year demonstrating remarkable resilience our consolidated sales volumes registered a solid growth of 15% making a strong comeback following the unseasonal rains in quarter 2 2023 in india both our india and international markets contributed to this achievement with a healthy double digit growth we have achieved notable progress on the operational front by making significant investments to develop both greenfield and brownfield manufacturing facilities throughout india in addition our greenfield facility in drc is progressing well and is slated to be commissioned in the upcoming months the strategic efforts are tailored to meet the rising consumption and to capture untapped market opportunities as part of our commitment to diversifying and enhancing our portfolio we are also enhancing our capacity for juices and value added dairy beverages to align with evolving consumer demands as part of our long term vision and in line with pepsico's global pet plus objectives we remain committed to substantially and environmentally environmental stewardship we are making investments that emphasize using green energy as well as reuse of pet which will be instrumental in mitigating environmental impact these endeavors are aligned with our pledge to the environment and reflect our ambition to nurture a greener future given india India's dynamic demographic landscape marked by a burgeoning young population and evolving consumption patterns we believe the Indian beverage market offers a monumental growth opportunity for the decades ahead as we intensify our foothold in India and expand our reach in Africa our strategic strategic in initiatives are aimed towards strengthening our position in the global beverage industry i would now invite mr gandhi to provide the highlights of the operation and financial performance thank you thank you mr chairman a uh, good afternoon and have a warm welcome uh, to everyone joining us today let me provide an overview of the financial performance for the third quarter and the nine months ended 30 september 2023 revenue from operations adjusted for excise gst 
grew by 21.8 percent year on year in the Q3 of 2023 to the level of 38,705 million. Consolidated sales volume showcased a healthy resurgence, growing 15 point, growing with an, at a level of 15.4 percent to 220 million cases in Q3 of 2023 up from 190 million cases in the comparable quarter of the previous year. This was driven by growth in both Indian and international markets. Notably, sales volumes within India demonstrated a strong recovery after facing demand challenges due to unseasonal rains in the preceding quarter. Furthermore, the net realization per case rose by 5.6% to reach at a level of 176.3 rupees a case and upturn primarily driven by the improvement witnessed in the international markets. CST constituted 72%, juice 5% and packaged drinking water at a level of 23% of uh, total sales volume in Q3 of uh, calendar year 2023. Our gross margins during the quarter improved by 163 basis point to the level of 55.3% from 53.7% mainly due to the softening of PET chip prices. As a result of higher gross margins and operational efficiencies, EBITDA also saw a notable increase of 26.2% to 8,821.4 million, with EBITDA margin improving by 79 basis points to 22.8% in the Q3 of calendar year 2023. Depreciation increased by 11.5% and Finance cost increased by 38% in Q3 of 2023 on account of capitalization of assets and setting up of new production facilities. Pad increased by 30% to the level of 5,140.6 million in Q3 of 2023 from rupees 3,954.8 million in Q3 of 22, driven by growth in revenue from operations and improvement in margins. During nine months of uh, calendar year 2023, the net capitalization is 20,000 million, primarily for setting up of new greenfield production facilities in Bundi, Rajasthan, and Jabalpur MP at a cost of Rs. 8,500 million, and the balance for brownfield expansion in India and international markets. The total cash outflow on account of above capitalization of 20,000 million during the year was 8,000 million. The balance 12,000 million was paid during calendar year 2022 in advance itself. Further, we have invested uh, rupees 16,000 million during nine months of calendar year 2023 for the next year, primarily for the three green field plants in India at Gorakhpur, UP, Supa, Parner, Maharashtra, and Khurda, Orissa, and in DRC. Congo, Africa. Once commissioned, the combined capex for 23 and 24 taken together will increase the peak month capacity in India at a level of 45% over 22 capacity. Uh, in conclusion, the company maintains a robust financial position supported by our well-funded strategic capex plans that are set to drive growth and enhance our position in the global beverage industry. We remain confident that it will lead to sustained strong performance and will continue to generate value for all our stakeholders going forward. On that note, I come to an end of the opening remarks and would like to now ask the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that we may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Vivek M. from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, good afternoon, team. 
uh, a few questions. Uh, first is on the gross margins. Uh, you know, uh, there is a sequential pickup. There is also a YOI, you know, uh, expansion quite a bit. And I, I heard your clarification and also saw the release where you mentioned about pet chips. What is your outlook, uh, you know, for the next few quarters on gross margins? Is is you know adjusting for mix? Is the current run rate you think uh, or the current number is expected to continue in the in the next few quarters? We feel so. We've always said that between our key ingredient is bread chips and sugar. So between one of one one of the two keeps on going up and down. So we maintain our uh, margins at 21 percent, which we have been maintaining regularly, and little bit up and down it keeps happening. But we we are quite confident that to maintain that margin going forward. Got it. Interesting. Uh, the second thing is on the on the volume growth, uh, and uh, you know last quarter was a bit soft. This quarter again, you know. Uh, growth is looking very strong, uh, Mr. Jaipuria. When we, you know, look at uh, and we may not necessarily be apple to apple comparison, but you know, generally speaking, FMCG companies are complaining about slowdown uh, and you know, whole host of issues. Whereas you have reported very strong growth, and it's not that the base is low. What is differentiating your category versus most other FMCG categories? You know, in your view, because of uh, which you know you are still reporting a double-digit growth, whereas most of the FMCG peers are struggling. You know, to go past, let's say, five percent. Yeah, I think there are two reasons for it. One, I think we are expanding our go-to market very aggressively, which maybe everybody is not doing as fast as we are doing. Secondly, I have been mentioning that with the power situation improving in the country, we have been able to penetrate much deeper into the rural because a lot of the uh, other FMCG com uh, companies have uh, said that rural is not growing fast enough for them and uh, rural is ra rather stagnating for them, which is not the case with us because we've been able to further penetrate deeper because of... Uh, better power situation and because we've been able we've been putting much more busy coolers aggressively which maybe is relevant to our industry and not relevant to everybody else's industry i think i'll just add to that a little bit as well this is varun jaipuria i think the 12 million fmcg outlets out there in the country today and roughly we're going to about 3.5 3.7 million outlets so the scope to improve in terms of numeric distribution, as Mr. Jaipur is mentioning, as electricity in the road gets better, that's one of the big reasons where the other FMC uh, companies are already at a higher distribution. Secondly, I think a big unlock for us has been a price pack architecture also, what we played in the market very ag aggressively, giving more advantage to the consumer as well, where he can come and consume more at a similar value or a slightly higher value, and the leverage is more. So I think it's a very value-conscious country. If you uh, give the right value to the consumer, the right uh, with the right volume, you can really get some numbers going. So all those have really helped us kind of propel the growth as well. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, I have never asked you this question, uh, you know, in the past, but this time around, given there was so much of uh, what should I say, so much of noise around this comments from Coke that they have the, their market shares in India at a three-year high. Does that mean that you know their growth is even faster than yours? Well, I'm not going to say that, but I think that I leave it to you guys to judge and it's very, there are Nielsen and Canadian numbers available to, for people to check, but we don't get into that. I think they are doing a great job and we are trying to do a better job. <laughs> right, right. And lastly, uh, Mr. Mr. I request you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. Sure, thank you. Thank All you. the best, team. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We'll take our next question from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, congrats team on good set of numbers. Couple of questions from my side. Uh, firstly, I see that you have formed a subsidiary in uh, Mozambique. Now, Mozambique is a geography which we were in earlier and edited, I think, in 2016 or 17. 
So what is the thought process here uh, in terms of trying to get into a geography which we had earlier thought it is better to get out of? That's my first question, sir. See, I think what we are doing in Mozambique is the markets have changed in the last six, seven years and the markets have substantially grown in uh, some of these African region territories. We have some surplus capacity in Zambia and this is bordering uh, Zambia. And uh, there is no duty, uh, the borders are open, there is no duty between them. So what we are going to do is part of Mozambique which fa uh, falls near the borders of Zambia, we are going to open only a distribution system which is what we are starting and use the capacity of, ad additional capacity of Zambia which we have. So, and we have some can capacity excess in Zimbabwe. So we are going to combine both of them and use this and get advantage of the volumes basically. Understood, sir. Understood. My second question is on juices. So, uh, our three uh, drivers for growth, which we had uh, sort of articulated uh, one or two quarters back uh, going ahead, would be uh, 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 Gatorade juices and uh, dairy beverages. So, if I look at juices, which is an important pillar in your uh, future growth strategy, the volumes here on a YOY basis are flat. So what is the reason for that uh, performance right now? Is it something macro or and how do you think that this situation will uh, improve and uh, you will drive better growth going ahead? See, this situation has already started improving in the last quarter. But our biggest issue juice, uh, the second quarter, which is April to June, is a very big category. Unfortunately, we had unseasonal rains and that whole quarter was a washout for us. And that affects the juice category comparatively. And uh, if you see Nimbus, we have grown practically at 100% even though we had a bad quarter, bad uh, season this year. And Gatorade is also growing at 70-80%. So if you look at our category, dairy we didn't have excess capacity. So we couldn't grow this, and uh, hopefully in January when we'll have uh, our other two plants ready, that's when the dairy real growth will start coming. Sir, for juices, the question, my question was pertaining to this quarter alone, not the April to June. I understand there was a seasonality there and uh, therefore the growth did not come. But this quarter you have done very well in uh, carbonated soft drinks, but uh, not so in juices. So just wanted to understand the uh, reason for the difference in performance. I tell you the major sales of juices come in March to June actually. That's the biggest portion of the, the, uh, the percentage of sales is not skewed uh, throughout the year equal. So the what is skewed is very heavy in those four months, which four months was a real wa washout for us uh, in this year. And we hope, me? No, I was just saying to answer your question, this is Varun. I think yeah. juices have seen a softer growth uh, quarter on quarter is your question, right? Q3 on Q3, on Q3 is your question. Correct. Not Q2 and what happened before. So my Correct. understanding of the market when I've gone is that juices has been softer at the industry level also, the retail level also, whereas seeds are growing much faster. Now why that's happened as a phenomena, I'm not very sure. But, uh, you know, I think it could be a event where people start drinking juices much more in Q2 and they prolong to drink in Q3. Uh, it could be sort of a trend line. And since Q2 we did not have, uh, Q3 never picked up any within juices. It went out of the retailer's mind, the people's mind, everybody's mind, because Q2 is the mango season. Once Q2 becomes big, then retailers start stocking up as well as you go forward. They never stocked up this time only because the season didn't pick up. So that it, Q2 could have an effect on Q3 according to me. Right, right. Understood. That's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nihal Mahesh Jam from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much and congratulations to the management. So my first question was that in the international operations, we're seeing an improvement in realizations, uh, whereas domestic, I think, because maybe the share of sting is, is flat, is maybe not seen that increment. So what is driving the improvement in the realization in the international business? Is there a product mix change that is happening there also? Well, there is slight product mix change, but basically our go-to market is improving. And, you know, a lot of these markets which we have entered were 
very uh, low share markets and as we are capturing these markets with our go to market it is all helping out and our sh- with our share improving our our realization is also improving and the mix is slightly improving in some of the categories got that uh the the second question was that uh, uh, we we had obviously given a guidance on the capex part of it that the second half of the year a cash capex will be around 500 crores for for the remaining part of cy23 just wanted to confirm that is, is that where the expected outlook is or there is a revision to that uh no uh, there is no additional capex it was uh, around 100 or less than 100 in the second uh, uh, part of the year however for uh, the year 2024 we have expedited implementation of our projects out of 2500 capex projected for 2024 out of that we have already spent 1600 crore uh, during this year to be ready ahead of time because now it's not a seasonality from april to june we have to be prepared with south and west coming to us and with the production is changing and b- with bigger territory to be remaining uh, prepared throughout the year we had to start ahead of time therefore uh, we are just expediting that otherwise for the year 23 the guidance stays the same got that raji i just had one question if i could take it that while you mentioning about depreciation being higher on a yoi level uh, despite uh, us capitalizing capex in, in q2 i see that the depreciation on a q1 q basis has not changed so any certain assets which which got written off and not adding to the depreciation figure just to clarify uh, the the capex uh, it's marginally up yes and uh, there was one plant of uh, jabalpur which was implemented uh, in the uh, i mean a uh, part of the last quarter so that's why it's slightly Uh, from uh, last quarter it is slightly higher maybe marginally but if we compare it to 2022 from 110 to 127 so with the two more plants implemented it's absolutely in line understood that's it from my side as a show of very happy diwali thank you so much thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of aditya soman from clsa please go ahead yeah hi uh, good afternoon Uh, so just one question uh, on seasonality uh, we've seen a very pronounced seasonality in the business uh, with 2q being very strong and the other quarters being somewhat lower and now i understand 2q being summer uh, is likely to remain as like the most important quarter but uh, do we expect a meaningful pick up in uh, the other quarters as we see south india become more relevant and and can you just guide us through the time frame of how how that will play out over the next uh, uh, few years See, if you see the numbers you, you know your q3 and q1 is becoming more significant than just being q2 when it used to be only north so that is why even this year when it was very bad with, uh, rains and uh, very bad uh, rainy season in the summer which in the north which is our peak territory our big territory we were still not negative so the seasonality curve has already started showing and if you see quarter 3 it's coming closer to quarter 2 seasonality even though we had a bad uh, season quarter 2 so going forward even quarter 4 now if you see the percentage of uh, every quarter is going to keep changing and as south and west become more and more important to us understand so so is it uh, fair for us to then model that the other three quarters uh, continue to grow sequentially must faster than the second quarter just mathematically as you sort of gain on on mathematically yes mathematically yes but next year might be different because we've had a bad uh, summer this year we big base yes yeah i understand for next year but over the medium term that would be a fair assumption yeah yeah absolutely right yeah thank you mr soman Yeah no that 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 was all I just one question. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah hi. Can you talk about the, the new product launches uh, growth contribution in this quarter? 
Subanji, the voice is coming very low. If you can please. Uh, can you use your handset mode, please, Mr. Kumar? Yes, so can you uh, can you talk about uh, the how is the growth momentum of new product launches in past one year, and how is the contribution uh, in the in this uh, in the quarter? No, I mean our new launches, our string is reasonably new. Our Gatorade is new, where I said we are growing at 70-80 percent. Our Nimbus is, we have only started pushing it from this year, and we are doing quite well. So, uh, dairy, as I said to you, our capacity was a constraint, so we couldn't grow faster than uh, what we should have grown, as the demand is there. So, but you will see a major change coming in the dairy business next year. So I think all our new innovations we launched uh, Sting Blue, which has done phenomenally well for us. So all the new innovations have done well, and How we've got think? a lot of innovation in the pipeline, which is a no sugar portfolio. That has done extremely well for us because Pepsi is also obviously to move towards a, a more healthier portfolio. So we're pushing a lot of products with mid calorie, pushing a lot of product, products with no sugar. And a no sugar portfolio as well as really outperformed for us. The last three to six months, also. How is the performance of uh, Sting? So Sting has been extremely good. We are growing at a very healthy pace, and yes. even the new Sting has done extremely well. So, which has added to the growth. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just want to clarify one data point that you shared uh, in the opening remarks. Uh, uh, did I hear it correctly that you are going to expand India capacity by about 45% versus CY22 end by next year? That's right. That is right. This will be uh, up and uh, commissioned by uh, before the summer of CY24 or during the course before of whole the commissioning of CY24, I mean before uh, the season yeah. of 24. That's why we have pre-spent this year uh, in 23. Ah, uh, understood. And uh, could you share a similar number for uh, international business as well? Uh, you know, especially you know the expansion you're doing in Congo. Uh, how does uh, you Congo know? Congo is a is a new plant. So there's a greenfield plant. It will be ready only for next April May. Uh, production. So it's the first plant we are putting in Congo. It's a greenfield plant. So there's no expansion or anything. It was. It says uh, there's no Pepsi in Congo. Correct. No, I I meant to ask. Uh, you know, what would be your capacity in CY24 for international business versus CY22 and some? So, so we have expanded wherever we needed capacity. We have expanded enough, so we will not be short of capacity for CY24. And we have done enough expansion in Morocco as well as uh, Zimbabwe. And Zambia, we have enough capacity. Nepal, we have enough capacity. We expanded this year already. And Sri Lanka, we have enough capacity. Right. Just one final. Could you give us some color on the opportunity that you see in Congo? How does it compare versus, uh, let's say, Zimbabwe, where you've seen phenomenal success and 1,000 crore plus top line last year? Uh, how big is the market opportunity in terms of the current capacity you are setting up? Uh, and uh, uh, I'm assuming Pepsi's market share in the market would be negligible today. So what, what are the dynamics uh, in terms of market share? I think it's too early. And Congo is a very uh, geographically very different country. It's like three countries into one. You can only service with one plant one part of the country, which is about 55-60% of Congo. The other two parts are completely cut off, which is about 2,500 kilometers away from that. So about 60% of Congo is what we are going to be serving in the first part of uh, our uh, first greenfield plant. If we want to serve the other part of Congo, we will have to put up another plant. And uh, it's a large market. It's more than 100 million population. Zimbabwe is only 16 million people. So it's a much more warmer climate. It's on near the equator. So I, I think the market is much larger, much, much larger than Zimbabwe. But it is, uh, Zimbabwe has been seven years. This is the first year. So we have to see, test our water. We are not there. Pepsi has not been there in that market ever. 
Uh, one final one, if I may, and if you can share, uh, could you uh, let us know the capacity that Greenfield plant capacity that you're setting up in Congo, how big in terms of million cases? So it can do about between 35 to 40 million cases. Understood. Uh, thank you so much. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Onkar Gugardare from Shri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. My question was regarding the volume growth. If you look at the Q3 21 growth to Q3 22 growth, it was around 24%. And this year, the Q3 22 to 23 is around 15%. So is it largely because of the base effect or uh, the markets haven't recovered fully uh, because of the unseasonal rates? So you see, uh, in Q3, July was a reasonably bad washout for us because July, the rains started much earlier actually than it normally starts and it was much heavier rains than normally is. So it never recouped from quarter two, July. So it was only in August and September that the real recoupment started and we were able to come back to uh, to a 15% growth. Also, we were lapping over a high growth uh, in uh, 22, we had a much larger growth in 22. So I think both the things put together. But I think if we had a decent July, uh, July, we would have had a much better and a much more healthier growth. So that's the combination of both you are saying? Both the things, yes. Oh, sorry, you were saying something. No, no, that's what I said, it's a combination of both. The weather uh, in July as well as uh, lapping over a uh, high growth Water, okay, the second question is on the production. Uh, you just mentioned that before season you will be ready. So if you look at all the plants which you are setting up currently, uh, may I know when they will be commencing the production? So we said before next year, which our season is actually March. So we expect all our plants to be in production before March. So whatever capex you are doing for those particular plants, all the plants will be ready before season. That's what you are saying, right? Yes, that's what we are hoping and expecting, yes. Okay, just a small question. Uh, what is the current current penetration level, if you can see, uh, tell in your uh, all the three categories? I know it is very small as compared to other FMCG kind of products, but still, if you can give a number to that. I'm not getting your question. Penetration for what? Penetration for juices or penetration for sports drink or, or dairy products, that's what I'm asking. I I don't have the exact number with me right now, but uh, you have yeah. it, Nandi? Uh, in fact, uh, as Varun mentioned, our reach today is up to three and a half million uh, dealers out of the base of uh, 12 million. And also uh, to increase the penetration every year, we are increasing the uh, VC base. That's the starting point to reach to the outlet and make them uh, agreeable to sell our products, carry it. We got a, a book, big runway after the string and 400,000 then distributors were added, dealers were added and they are now, they were never purchasing the goods from us earlier and now not only they carry string, they have also started carrying our other products. And this number is increasing 200, 300,000 year after year, and uh, which is helping us in increasing our share. And uh, a long way to go, but uh, the efforts are continuing. We have already reached, uh, if you have seen our presentation, 925,000 visas placed already. And uh, we are doubling our efforts to put the visas in coming years. Okay, one clarification which I need is that last time you mentioned that if you are doing around uh, 2,900 crore of capex, uh, then you will be doing around 1.8 to 1.9 times a set ton that will be. So that's what we are expecting, right? Uh, 2,500 and yes, once the plants are fully matured and uh, they are at its capacity, they do a turn of uh, 1.8, 1.9 to have the total capacity utilization that's right. So that will be only possible in summer of 25, right? I request you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you. 
we have a next question from the line of Sanjaya Satapati from Ampersand Capital Investment Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks a lot and congratulations once again. Uh, so, uh, two questions. One is that uh, uh, um, even though you were pushing this uh, sting and the uh, gutter uh, uh, so there was not much of improvement in your ASP uh, after uh, after several quarters on a year on year basis. Is, 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 what could be the reason? Is it because your mix is no longer changing? Uh, can you repeat? The I question? can't get your question. No, what so my question your... is that. Uh, your India business, the average uh, selling price for, uh, has not really grown uh, like the way it used to. Like it used to go up like five, seven percent. So I'll explain you. I'll explain you why that's happened is because over the last three months, like I was mentioning earlier, we have dropped a lot of pricing, and that pricing, what we've dropped for a lot of our major packs in terms of net revenue, has translated into a huge growth number. That's why our revenue growth, if you're seeing, is in a high double digit. That's mm -hmm. why the revenue per case hasn't gone up, but your growth has gone up at overall basis, which has made your profitability go up. So we've done a lot of pricing correction in quarter three with a lot of major packs. That's why you're not seeing a huge growth in the uh, net realization per case compared to what it was last year. Understood. And is it something which is just a tactical and you will go back to a different pricing once uh, business season improves? See, you know, the market is very competitive, right? So hopefully we believe we in what we keep on changing uh, depending on the uh, what Coke is know, doing, what the competition is doing right yeah. now. So it is a very agile and very fast-moving market. We hope obviously this will improve going forward and we will correct our pricing. But, you know, our main focus is how much growth can we drive in the market at a profitable level. And that's what we've been able to do in quarter three. And as long as we're able to deliver these results at least and these growth, and profitability will be pretty happy, I think. Understood. And the so last question is that you are getting uh, into this, uh, I mean, you are expanding this dairy and other business in a big way for next season. Uh, so will that have a positive bearing on your margin and ASC? Well, as we had said earlier, dairy, our dairy and juice margins are similar to our uh, uh, CSD margins. So we, it will expand uh, our total portfolio and expand our growth. And uh, the margins are not going to change, but uh, the margins are not going to come down either. And ASP, will that improve? Or... Pardon me? ASP, the average selling price, will that improve because of change in mix towards dairy? No, but dairy is still too small to make a complete change in the overall category. I mean, uh, dairy will be still very small category for us. But growth-wise, it will be huge, but overall category will be much smaller. So it won't affect the overall. Understood. So if I can just ask the last thing, is there any progress on your South Africa side, if you can just uh, give us some update? Well, we are always looking forward to new territory, but we are hoping, we have tried to put a company there, and let's see what happens in the future. Thanks, sir. All the best. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Hi. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, we have seen that our uh, Bihar capacity also sort of uh, ran out in the first year itself. Uh, and you have talked about this 45% growth in capacity uh, ahead of next year's summer season. Uh, so wanted to check what is your uh, expectation on uh, full utilization of this capacity as in uh, uh, can it be uh, like we should be running out of this capacity by CY25? I wish I could really answer you properly. It depends on our rain gods partly because our peak season rain gods play a quite an important role for us. So we want to be prepared for the right season and of course some effect happens because of the weather. So if we get a normal season, we should be utilizing a reasonable portion of our capacity. Got it, sir. And, uh, sir, for India business, uh, gross margins have improved uh, quite significantly. So I uh, wanted to check, is it entirely uh, due to lower PET prices? Uh, or there is some component of uh, uh, mix change in this also because juice, etc., uh, the mix is lowered in this quarter. So is there a benefit coming from that front as well? 
Well, there is slight difference, but mainly partly sting has gone up, so sting sting is a little more profitable for us. And uh, sting, uh, yeah. Can I take the question? Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, so sting is obviously a big contributor. It's growing very well, but I think our push is always towards more profitable uh, product portfolio. So we're pushing CAG much more in the market. And apart from that, I think we've done a better job at managing the discounts in the market as well. So that discount control has come in much better, which has obviously given, given us a better profitability. And there's been enough initiatives we've taken over the last three months to reduce or improve uh, efficiencies at plant level, uh, which have given us some uh, results as well. So I think it's a culmination of all three four things that happened, which has resulted in the PET prices as well, which has given us better margins. Great, Varun. That, that's really encouraging. Actually, it seems more structural then. Uh, also, on the international front, uh, uh, the margin performance, uh, though revenue growth has been quite impressive, uh, but from margin perspective, uh, things have been uh, a bit on the volatile side. So, wanted to check the reason for this and uh, also what are the steps that we are taking for a, a sustainable margin performance in international operations as well. Actually, the margin contraction or what you have seen is basically Zambia because of the currency devaluation. Otherwise, other places we have done well, all the other places we have done well, it's basically one country where the currency has got devalued, where the, we are showing, seeing a big gap. So this is part of the Africa region, you know, it keeps happening, unfortunately, and that's why, you know, you go slow in Africa. But overall, the growth and the demand is, that's where the growth segment is coming after India. And till when this is expected to continue, sir? As in, you, do you have some idea on this? I wish I, wish I can tell you. Sure, sir. Think sure, sure. That's it from mine. Yeah. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Deepak Singh from Hexaware. Please go ahead. Mr. Deepak Singh? Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you for uh, taking my question. I want to know, like, uh, you have acquisition Lunar Mac technology. So it is basically into computers. So what is the purpose of acquiring that company? No, that company is uh, making caps for us. It's a backward integration where we already held 55% shares. And one of the shareholders we have been able to acquire who had 5% equity. So our equity has become 60% now. It's a backward integration to our own system. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Chintan Katare, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, my only question is, um, I please help me understand the trend of impact on your business from the likes of new entrants like Reliance's carbonated drinks, be it Capricola or any other soft drink brands that they are introducing. How do you see the trend of the impact? Well, I think every new person coming in has a chance to uh, grow the market. Reliance is a, is a formidable competition. We believe they will take some share, but the market is growing at a pace which is so high that there is enough room for all the players to come in and they will put more investments, more visit coolers. I think the overall the market will grow and so they will get their share and we will grow and at our pace. And they have to set up their backward, uh, uh, they don't have the backward uh, equipments yet. So it will take time but I'm sure being reliant they will uh, do a good job and uh, but I am, we are not so concerned because I think the market is so large in India and market will be growing at a, more investments will make the market grow much faster. All right. Fair enough, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from the line of Onkar Gugatare from Shri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, can you help me out with the growth? in the market, the number which you just mentioned, industry growth? See, industry growth, uh, we are not saying that anybody is losing share or gaining share. So we are growing at a healthy double digits in the market. I'm sure is growing at a, at a similar 
Mr. Google Dare? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ish Mohit Arora from Soik LLP. Please go ahead. Sir, so, uh, thank you for taking my question. Just when it comes to our portfolio of energy drinks, do we have any plans of launching any new products like Rockstar or any new variants of things? Yes, there is a possibility. We are working with Pepsi, and maybe next year we will uh, uh, launch another energy drink. I'm not sure and, if it's uh, Rockstar or what, but we are looking to launch one more uh, energy drink next year. And uh, these products will be like in higher pricing range, or will be the pricing range similar to Sting? I am sorry, I can't disclose that at the moment, but. Uh, uh, we, are, as I said, we will be launching another energy drink. Okay, thank you for taking my question, sir, and all the best for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We have our next question from the line of Sumit Zoshi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir, and everyone. Good afternoon, first of all, and uh, congratulations for the great setup number. I have just one follow-on question. Like we see, Pepsi is growing very heavily in US from a healthy energy drink perspective with uh, Celsius. So, do we have any plans going forward to launch the similar thing for India and other markets? I couldn't get the question. It's not clear what you're. Uh, saying. He's trying to ask that that since energy has become very big for us in other markets, yeah. African markets. Are we planning to launch energy as well as a category or not? If I understood your question properly. Yes. Yeah, can, can you answer it? Because I didn't get it properly. Bro. <laughs> no, so energy is going to be a big play for us in our portfolio. Anyway, yeah, yeah. forward. Are you talking about other markets outside yeah. India? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have already launched it, actually. We are already in most of the countries with our energy drink, and it's doing well. Yeah, actually, sir, what I was trying to ask you is, uh, yeah. like, uh, Pepsi is working with uh, Celsius brand, uh, like, that is in U.S. energy drink market, right? And they are and they are doing very well there. So, do we have any plans going forward to launch in India and other markets also? Varun, I am not getting the question properly. No, no. no. Okay. So, I think we have a lot of uh, energy brands across the world, right? Whether they've acquired or created them. So I think Mr. Jepuria and the earlier question which was asked was, are you going to be launching more brands of Pepsi uh, under energy? We do have plans to launch. Which brand we will launch at what pricing we will launch? We are not sure. We're still working through it, but we will be launching in India and other markets also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Jenny Karia from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, one clarification, we mentioned that out of the 2,500 crores capex for the greenfield expansion in next year, 1,600 crores is already spent in CY23. So we expect that around 900 crores will be spent in fourth quarter CY23 or how should we look at that uh, capex also for next year? That is the first question. It might be split between uh, quarter four and first quarter of uh, next year. Okay. Uh, the second question is with regards to energy drink. So we launched our energy drink as a competitive price point. Now we hear that Tata Consumer Products is launching it at a 50% discount to our MRP. So do we see any competition or uh, market share loss in terms of volumes for the energy drink? Well, we don't see volume loss, but I can't say exactly what Tata is going to do and how their product is going to be. So very difficult to say till we see the product and what it does in the market. Uh, okay. And so lastly, uh, we are uh, using uh, sustainable recycled pet chips going forward. So will that affect any of a gross margin? Will it be gross margin, accretive, neutral, any, uh, any still, color on that? It's still, still reasonably small. So... I don't see it, and we are ourselves getting into recycled pet. So by the time we, the reasonable portion of recycled pet will be going in, we'll be manufacturing it ourselves. We have a joint venture signed with the Indorama, which is going to be in production by 25. Okay, understood. So thank you. That's all from my end. All the best for you. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our investor relations team. Thank you once again for your interest and support and for taking the time to join us uh, on this call. Look forward to interacting with you all soon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Varun Beverages Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may not disconnect your lines.